Deuteronomy chapter number one, verses six through eight from the New Living Translation of the Bible. And it reads as follows. When we were at Mount Sinai, the Lord our God said to us, you have stayed at this mountain long enough. It is time to break camp and move on. Go to the hill country of the Amorites and to the neighboring regions, the Jordan Valley, the hill country, the western foothills, the Negev, and the coastal plains. Go to the land of the Canaanites and to Lebanon, and all the way to the great Euphrates River. Look, I am giving all this land to you. Go in and occupy it. For it is the land the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to all their descendants. The word of the Lord is blessed. For a few moments, on today, I want to dialogue with you from the subject, divine impulse, divine impulse, and for a theme, I would like to give you, as children of God, we must recognize and respond to the call for action by God even when we don't want to move. If we're honest with ourselves on today, it is likely that we can all acknowledge experiencing periods of stagnation in our personal growth. Periods of stagnation in our spiritual development. And periods of stagnation in the process that God has given us that leads us to our purpose. Stagnation, my brothers and my sisters, it occurs when there is a lack of movement in areas where progress is required. It is vital for us to recognize that stagnation can quietly creep in. It can quietly creep in when we're not monitoring both our internal and external circumstances. Identifying these stagnant areas in our lives and taking the necessary steps to overcome them, Deacon Smith, is essential for our ongoing growth, for ourselves, our families and our church. During times, my brothers and my sisters, when we feel spiritually stagnant, it is very important for us to recognize that regardless of our struggles and regardless of our emotions, God has called us 
to move. Understanding that this call is genuine and sincere. We need to engage in prayer and reflection to discern God's will for our next step. Are y'all with me this morning? Through prayer, we seek and we gain guidance from God. We understand that when we come before the Lord, Elder Kiel, God makes the picture clear. But when God makes the picture clear, it is our responsibility wholeheartedly and consistently to follow the directions of Almighty God. I want us to understand on today that we are 100% accountable to God. But we should also be accountable to our fellow believers who can support us and hold us responsible. To have a heart and a mindset to respond to God's call, we have to be readers and studiers of his word. We need to be readers and studiers of his word regularly so that we deepen our understanding of what God is calling us to do. And this time that we put in with God, it guarantees that we will be able to hear God clearly when he gives his divine instructions. When we are prompted by God, HMBC, we must be ready to act. Remembering that faith without works is dead. By serving God and by serving one another, we live out our faith and we grow spiritually. Therefore, my brothers and my sisters, let us continue to move forward. Striving and upholding our faith, knowing that God is faithful and that God is always present and he's ready to guide us no matter what we are enduring. As we journey in faith, Sister Rose Frank, let us remember that our spiritual growth does not require us to have passive or non-active belief. But we are to have active belief, which is a growing faith. And this growing faith, my brothers and my sisters, it fuels our commitment and our functional obedience to God's calling. By aligning our actions with God's will, we demonstrate our trust and our reliance on the Almighty. It is through this obedience that we experience true transformation and we draw closer. To God. My brothers and my sisters. And all. We do. As we move. Let us seek not to glorify self. But we should be seeking. To honor God. With every step that we make. Every move that we make. In every decision that we make when it comes to the body of Christ. 
as believers, it should be our desire for our lives to be a testimony of his grace and his love shining brightly in a world of darkness. And as we continue to walk in faith, and as we continue to walk in obedience, may we find joy and fulfillment in serving the Almighty God. Furthermore, in our pursuit of spiritual growth and movement, let us also remember the importance of self-reflection and introspection in order for us to identify areas of improvement and needed growth we must intentionally take the time to examine ourselves not only must we examine ourselves we must, uh, must examine our thoughts and we need to take a closer look at the things that we do. Through self-awareness and humility, we open ourselves up to God's transformative work in our lives. Finally, as we strive for spiritual maturity, and movement, let us begin not to run from the journey. But we need to take a moment or two to embrace the journey. Because the journey is sweet. It may have some struggles, but I'm going to tell you something, beloved, it is worth it. But we embrace this journey with patience, perseverance, and trust in God's timing. Understanding, Reverend Slater, that growth takes time. Growth takes effort. And growth, my brothers and my sisters, takes a surrendering to his will day in and day out. Let us press on in faith knowing that he who began a good work in us is willing to bring it to completion. Yes. So I encourage you, HMBC, to keep on striving. I encourage you to hold on a little while longer. I encourage you to keep growing and to never stop learning. Keep striving for higher heights. And as you strive for higher heights, encourage your brothers and your sisters. Keep loving on one another. Keep loving on God. Don't give up. And I encourage you, no matter what you're going through, to keep pressing on. The songwriter says, just keep your faith and never cease to pray. Just walk upright. Call him noon, day, or night. Be we yeah. There's no need to worry because tell yourself, God, he never fails. Deuteronomy 31, verse 9. States that this law was written down by Moses. And this verse, Sister Monique, it most likely refers to chapters 1 through 30. We understand that the majority of the book of Deuteronomy consist of sermons given 
by Moses to the Israelites. He gave his sermons to the Israelites on the plains of Moab, marking the end of their 40 year wilderness journey. Deuteronomy, my brothers and my sisters, is the final installment or the final chapter in Moses' biography. The book, it reflects on the past failures of Israel. And Moses urges them not to repeat the mistakes of the past as they enter the promised land. Y'all with me on today? In our text, Moses explains to the current generation of Israelites what the Lord had done for them as a people. He did this so the current generation of Israelites could confidently give their full allegiance to God. We understand that God has already proven himself as their protector. He has proven himself as their sustainer. He has proven himself as their Lord. And he has proven himself as their God. Even today, my brothers and my sisters, it is helpful for us to remember God's faithfulness. It's important to reflect on God's faithfulness to past generations of our families and past generations of this church. Our confidence in God is strengthened most when we recall the great things that he has already done for us. See, he's already proven, thinking of Simpson, that he's our protector. He's already proven that he's our God. And he's already proven that he's going to work it out for our good. But where I want to go on this morning is not where I intended to go with this sermon. See, Reverend Slater, the key terms in our text are break, move, go, and possess. Am I in the book? In Deuteronomy, chapter number one, six through eight, the terms break, move, go, and possess our clear directives from God to the Israelites. These directives from God, I think we all can agree, they still apply to us today. These commands, they signify that the Israelites must prepare to depart from their current situation. And they must be they must prepare to depart from their current location. When they depart from their current location, they must intentionally advance towards their destination. 
And not only must they advance, but they are commanded to enter into the land that is set before them. And they are to take possession of the land that God has given them. I think Deacon and Simpson just told me to press rewind. <laughs> These commands signify that Hope Missionary Baptist Church must be prepared to depart from their current location. And we must advance towards the destination that God has given us. And this destination is a land or a ministry that God has set before this church. And Deacon Woods, we are to take possession of that ministry. Because God has granted this ministry to us. We must have a divine impulse. But when we closely examine these directives given to Israel, we can clearly see the direct application to us today. It becomes clear as we examine the text that many situations in our lives have called us not to move when God has commanded us to move. Sometimes when we do move, we don't move at the pace that God wants us to move due to the fact that we have failed to move obediently and in a timely manner, we have become stagnant. Relationships have become stagnant. The family has become stagnant. And the ministry has become stagnant. Furthermore, we have to understand that our stagnation or lack of movement, Elder Jones, it can be dangerous because stagnation is a breeding ground for misunderstandings. Stagnation is a breeding ground for miscommunication. Stagnation is a breeding ground for all types of dangers and potential risks. However, as a result of our relationship with God, we clearly understand that we must follow God's instructions on when to move and how to move. And we do this when he commands us to break the camp. What God is telling us right now is that it's time for us to move. I don't want it to get distorted. I'm not talking about moving from 100 Limit Street. It's time for us to move the way the Spirit is telling this church to move. And not only should we be moving as a church, but we need to be moving individually as well. My brothers and my sisters, it's simply time to break camp. It's time to move towards the destination that God has put in our spiritual GPS. Once we recognize the destination 
that God has placed in our spiritual GPS, it becomes our mandate as instructed by Almighty God to proceed to our destinations immediately. Sister Stacy, once we arrive at the destination that God has set for us, our responsibility does not end there. We are called not only to break camp and move forward, but also to take possession of the promised land that God has prepared for us. We all have a promised land that God has prepared for us. So it is our mandate to break camp, to go, to move, and possess all that God has for us. Just like Israel was instructed to possess the land flowing with milk and honey. We are reminded that God has blessings and provisions waiting just for us. The songwriter says, God's got a blessing with my name on it. However, to receive these blessings, we have to have faith. Remember, faith in the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. We have to have faith in God's guidance. And Ray, we got to step out of our comfort zones. And we have to step out on faith and actively pursue what God has in store for us. Therefore, Elder Kill, we have to pay attention to the call from God to break camp to depart from our current state of stagnation and to move towards the destination. God has a day for us. My brothers and my sisters, may we have the faith to boldly and aggressively take hold of the promise. Take hold of the ministries. Take hold of the families. Take hold of the jobs. And understand that God will be with us every step of the way. So with all of that said, as members of the body of Christ, how should we respond when God has revealed to us that we remain stagnant way too long? Number one, we must be accountable and acknowledge our inactivity. Understand that when we are accountable, we recognize, internalize, and accept that our lack of progress goes against God's intended plan for us. Number two, we must shift our mindset. Once we acknowledge 
our tendency to do nothing or to remain unchanged. It is essential to adjust our thinking towards movement and growth for God's glory. And last but not least, point number three. We must align ourselves with God's will. As God's ambassadors, yes. it is imperative, Jason, that we align our mindset to faithfully follow his direction and his instructions executing his plan with a spirit of excellence and dedication so we must be accountable and acknowledge our inactivity we must shift our mindset and we must align with God's will. When we move, we move with a divine impulse. And when we do that, we will no longer choose to be idle or stagnant. We will not be idle and we will not be stagnant because we move with a divine impulse. Understand on today that there will be setbacks and we will experience negative vibes when we move. We move with a divine impulse. Along the way, there are going to be naysayers and there will be agitators but when we move we move with the divine impulse at times of contentment and happiness we may think that this on a regular basis is beyond our reach but we continue to move with the divine impulse the songwriter simply lets us know this walk is not about us. It's about Jesus. And because it is about Jesus, and because we are the body of Christ, see, when I move, I need you to move just like that. You may be sick, and you may be tired, but when I move, I need you to move just like that. You may be weary and you may be torn, but when I move, I need you to move just like that. You may want to do things the old way, but when I move in 2024, I need you to move just like that. We may not see eye to eye, so we can agree to disagree. So when I move, I need you to move just like that. See, the other songwriter says, Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. See, a higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. For today, we may have struggles. Lord, elevate our spirits and help us rise. We may be dealing with disappointment. Lord, elevate our spirits and help us rise. We may be dealing with some discouraging situations. Lord, elevate our spirits and help us rise. Frustration may be a regular occurrence. 
Lord, elevate our spirits and help us rise. We may face disillusionment and we may face detour. Our past may be paved with setbacks, dissatisfaction, and divergence may walk our way. Lord, elevate our spirits and help us rise. We may encounter despair and we may come across some lonely nights. Discontentment and deviations may challenge our resolve. Frustrations and setbacks may mark our path. Lord, elevate our spirits and help us rise. Tell your neighbor, Jesus, he never fails. Tell him one more time, Jesus, he never fails. Heaven and earth may someday pass away, but Jesus, he never fails. Let me paint the picture about this unfailing Jesus. See, the Bible says he's the Prince of Peace. The Bible says he's the living word. The Bible says he's the savior of all mankind. The Bible says he's the lamb of the living God. He's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. He's the door. The bread of life. He's the resurrection and the life. He's the living word. He's the good shepherd. He's the king of all kings. See, I'm trying to describe him for you. He's the alpha, the omega. He's our redeemer. He's the son of God. He's the son of man. He's Mary's baby boy. He's the great high priest. He's the word made flesh. He's our deliverer. He's the mighty counselor. He's the comforter in our time of need. He's the true foundation of our faith. He is the ultimate example for all of us. See, I want to ask this question. Is the picture getting clearer? He's the Lord, strong and mighty. He's the Lord, mighty in battle. He's the miracle worker. He's the king of glory. He's the Lord, strong and mighty. He's the Lord, mighty in battle. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's our provider. He's the great I am. He's the master teacher. He's the eternal hope. He's our everlasting father. He's our light in the darkness. And he's the one who saved us all. And when he calls us, by our name in the midst of our lack of movement it should ignite a divine impulse to break to move to go and possess So with all that said, we have a divine impulse to acknowledge when we're not moving. We have a divine impulse to shift the way we think. We have a divine impulse to align our will with the will and the way of Almighty God. And we have a divine impulse to go in and to possess all that God has given us. The doors of the church are open.